Mark chapter 12, and we're just picking up <clears throat> the Pharisees have come and questioned his authority. He puts them down, and he began to speak unto them by parables. Why? Because they don't believe in him. They're trying to trick him up. <clears throat> a certain man, God, planted a vineyard, Jerusalem, that would be Isaiah 5, 1 through 7, and set a hedge about it, protection. And what also would be, this is my this is my land, that's your land. And dig the place for the wine fat, the place where you put the wine. And built a tower, to protection, look out who's coming. And let it out to husbandmen, that would be the Jewish leaders, who he's speaking to right now. And went into a far country, heaven. And at the season... He sent to the husbandman a servant, these would be your prophets, that he might receive from the husbandman of the fruit of the vineyard. So God sent the prophets to these people. Where are the people? How come Abraham's bosom is not getting filled? How come hell's open how hell? How come hell is opening her mouth and receiving all these people? What's going on? Wouldn't that be think something to think about? And they caught him and beat him and sent him away empty. And you can find these prophets in the Old Testament. And their stories, Hebrews 13, is it? It gives a whole list of what they were doing to the prophets. Banishing them, killing them, sawing them in half. And he sent unto them another servant. And at him they cast stones and wounded him in the head. And sent him away shamefully handled. I wonder who that is. God knows. God's telling the history of these religious leaders in Jerusalem and in, in the Jews. Hey, what's going on here? Again, he sent another. Isn't God merciful? And with him they killed and many others. Beating some and killing some. They're wounding them, they're shamefully treating them, killing them, beating them. These are the Old Testament prophets. They didn't have an easy life. Having yet, therefore, one son. You don't need him to guess who that is. Well, beloved, you know who that is. He sent him also last unto them. Oh, the prophets are done with Israel? Last? Jesus is a prophet, king and priest. Matthew 24, he told the disciples what's going to happen in the future. He told the disciples, we've been reading all along. I'm going to Jerusalem, they're going to kill me. I'm going to be up in three days. You guys are going to have not an easy life in the book of Acts. Oh, well, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you know, in, in 70 AD, you're going to be in trouble. Saying, they will reverence my son. They're supposed to reverence son. Uh, Revelation for for the were made for the glory and honor and worship of God. But these husbandmen said amongst themselves, "This is the hair." Now, didn't we just read about their little councils? We just had one, verse eighteen of eleven, and the scribes and chief priests heard it and saw how they might destroy him. For they feared him because all the people were astonished at his doctrine. That's current events, what Jesus just spoke. They just had this assembly. They just had this council after he went in that temple and, and destroyed everything. Imagine, you, know, you, you, ever, you ever get that little urge in your, in your conscience when somebody speaks and you've done it or something like it? This is what he's doing. They will reverence my son, but those husbands said among themselves, this is the hair. We know who that is. That's Jesus Christ. Let us kill him. Uh, as far as 11. 18. Just one instance. The, cur the current events. And then. Uh, let, this is hair. Let us kill him. And inheritance shall be ours. That's why Pilate said for envy they delivered Jesus. They figure if they get rid of Jesus, then guess what? We'll get all the crowds back. We'll take Jesus' ministry from his back. And that's what the Jehovah Witnesses do. They seek and get 
young Christian lambs, ewes. They don't know any better. They took him. Now he's prophesying. Here's the prophet. He is now telling the scribes, the Pharisees, and I don't know the said he's now prophesied before them. This is what you're going to do to me in a couple days. How's that? And watch something. Watch this. Then they took him and killed him, cast him out of the vineyard, out of Jerusalem, Hebrews 13, 12, outside the gates. What a remarkable prophecy God has. You know, they say that, and I've heard that now there's more prophecies, but I've heard there's 48 general prophecies about the first advent of Jesus Christ. What about the prophecies Jesus said before he died? <laughs> and they were fulfilled 100%. And this is a bunch of the religious leaders that are going to kill him. What shall therefore the Lord of the vineyard do? God. He will come and destroy the husbandman. And this was filled 70 AD. Another prophecy fulfilled. And will give the vineyard unto others. Gentiles. Acts 8, 10 and 18 verse 6. And guess what's sitting there now? It's not a vineyard there now. It's the dumb of the rock. You know what the dumb of the rock is? It's not Jewish. And if it's not Jewish, what is it? It's Gentile. And I believe over there in Revelation, when they're talking about when they're going to measure that temple, it says something about a court of the Gentiles. You know, leave this out. This is the Gentile. In a Jewish land given by God. And have you not read this scripture? And that's funny because we just read Isaiah uh 40 today and part of John's message was have you not heard have you not heard that's what Jesus was quoting the stone which the builders rejected is become the head of the corner now the only way that stone could be the head and uh, somewhere in another place it says cheap it's got to be a capstone a capstone of a pyramid nothing else would fit this was the Lord's doing, and it's marvelous in our eyes. God wanted these men to kill Jesus Christ for our salvation, for our gospel. Christ died, was buried, and arose again. And God, knowing the heart of these men, like he knew the heart of Pharaoh in Egypt, I'm going to let you guys do it because it's going to be to my purpose. What a wonderful God we got. And they sought to lay hold on him. <laughs> Let's fulfill this scripture right now, guys. Come on. But feared the people, for they knew that he had spoken the parable against them. Boy, they had more insight than what the apostles had. Yeah. So what are they going to do? Let's kill him now. Let's get this pro that's what they're saying. Let's let's perform this parable right now, this prophecy. Come on, let's do it. But it's not his time. You see how eager they were? Christ prophesied what they were going to do. Like, okay, let's do it now. That's like you get a preacher or evangelist, somebody coming to church, and you know what? We're just gonna start giving to the Lord, and next thing you know, money starts going into play right then and there. That's what's happening. And they left him and went their way. And they send unto him certain of the Pharisees, here they are again, the Jewish side, and the Herodians. This is the Roman side. This is church and state. To catch him at his word. So we're going to ask a question that we make. We're going to entrap him. We're going to make him in trouble with the Roman government. I'll explain to you. <clears throat> and when they were come, they said unto him, Master, now you know that master is not master as improper. Okay, master, I'd love to read the attitude and how these words are. Hey, master, yeah. We know that thou art true. You see? They knew. And earnest for no man. Well, that's not true. He cares. He loves them. Been healing them. Been taking care of them. Feeding him. Oh, I got notes there. Cares for no man. 
I guess I'll make notes in my Bible. I erase words. Are you trying to tell me Jesus didn't care for anybody? He didn't care for the Pharisees. He did nothing for the Pharisees. The Pharisees didn't have anything to do with God. For thou regardest not the person of men. True. I don't care who you are. I'm God. I don't care if you're a Pharisee. You're wrong. He stood, he stood before Pilate, the, the governor of the land, and said, Listen, this power comes from God above, not you. Shut your mouth. For thou regards not the person of man, but teaches the way of God in truth. How's that for a testimony? That's like Judas walking up to the priest saying, I have sinned the innocent blood. All right. Is it lawful to give trib tribute to Caesar or not? Not in America. This is a question of taxation. And now, this is what this is what would happen. If Jesus said, pay your taxes, well, look at that. He's for the Roman government. He's against the Jewish people. We ought not be paying. The law says we ought not to be giving money to Gentiles. And that's what the law says. We're not supposed to be under Gentile power. But if he says... No, don't give the Roman government. You you take the Herodians and say, all right, bring him to Caesar because he's defiling the Roman tax. So no matter what, we got him. This is it. He's in trouble. He's going to jail, and we got him. Shall we give or shall we not give? But he, knowing their hypocrisy, amen, said unto them, why tempt ye me? Bring me a penny that I may see it. All right, give me a penny. Now he's going to satisfy both groups. They weren't expecting this. No way. And they brought it. And he says unto them, Whose is the, who is the image and superscription? I'm just reading the notes here. Well, if this was today, it would say United States of America. Wouldn't it not? Doesn't all our money and our, our coins and our bills say United States of America? So who owns our money? What did Jesus say? Let's read in the Bible. And they said unto him, Caesar's. Jesus answered and said unto them, Render to Caesar the things of are Caesar's, there's the Herodians, and to God the things that are God's. It's supposedly the Pharisees, but that gets care of the Pharisees. And they marveled at him. What on earth just happened here? How did he just... He pleased us both. Remember, there was two monies, wasn't there? There was a Roman money, and there was a temple money. Temple money had no inscription or image, because that that's a violation of the Jews. The Roman money had Caesar's, and if you've ever seen Roman money, that Caesar's was ugly. Then come unto him the Sadducee. Oh, come on, guys, leave him alone. He just answered one of their questions. Now here comes the Sadducee. Now here are the four enemies. The Pharisees, 12, 13. The Herodians, 12.13. The Sadducees, 12.18. And the Scribes, 12.28. He just told them in the parable, you guys are going to kill me. You know what they're trying? They're trying all work to get it done. So the Sadducees would say there's no resurrection. Get that. And they say, they asked him, saying, this is your liberals. Master. Master. Yes. They're throwing that word around like it was. Moses wrote unto us, unto you. You don't even believe what Moses wrote. And he's going to quote Moses. I believe this, this chapter. Yeah, he's going to quote from Moses. Moses wrote unto us. Man, take your upper nose and get it out of your butt, will you? If, man, if a man's brother die and leave his wife behind him, and leave no children that his brother should take his wife and raise up seed unto him. That's true. That's, um, where's that note? 
Well, Ruth, Ruth 1, 11 and 12. So, they got that part right. This is in the law of Moses. I don't know why they would bring this one up. They don't even believe what they're going to say. And you're going to get people who are going to try to catch you. And you're going to get people who are going to come up with your question. And they don't believe anyway. So, here we go. Now, there were seven brethren. Just pick a number out of half. And the first took a wife, dying, left no seed. Men will ask you stupid questions. The second took her and died. Neither left he any seed in the third. And they're just going to bore you. You know, they're going to waste time. I'm glad they didn't say 50 brothers. Isn't there a movie? Eight brothers, eight someone. The seven had her and left no seed. Last of all, the woman died off. Well, we... The problems with the woman, not the not the men. In the resurrection, wait a minute. There came on him Sadducees, which say there is no resurrection. In the resurrection, um, malfunction, malfunction. In the resurrection, therefore, when they shall rise. Hmm, that's what happens in the resurrection. You shall rise. Whose wife shall she be of them? For the seven had her to wife. Now they're thinking in, in, in heaven with no resurrection. They're going to battle it out for this woman. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Do ye not therefore err, ooh, Lord, because ye know not the scriptures, O Lord, neither the power of God. God, oh Lord, ouch! Man, he just kicked butt with with his mouth. He said, "You don't know nothing. You do err in Scripture, and you don't know God." Now, what would Jesus do? <laughs> and I, listen, I've had events like this on the street ministry, and then the people walk away, and you have no love. You're not kind. And when they shall rise from the dead, ooh, he just, yeah, they're going to rise from the dead. In the resurrection, when, sh when they shall rise, and Jesus said, when they shall rise from the dead, match that with verse 23. He, co he copied exactly what they said, even though they don't believe it, because that's what the Bible says. They hung themselves on their own fat, ugly-looking tongue. They are neither married, so there is no marriage in heaven. Because what do you do if you had one woman and seven guys? Legally married. These, these were all legal marriage. What are you going to do when you get to heaven? What do you do if you got a guy who, who's had three or four wives? You know, however. Widower himself and all that. What are you going to do when you get to heaven? Three or four wives? But we're not going to heaven for marriage. We're not going to, to heaven for a relationship. We're going to heaven by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and for the glory of honor of the Lord Jesus Christ. How's that? But are as, as the angels which are in him. As angels, not angels. I don't become an angel. But I'll be like the angels. In what way? I won't die. I'll honor God. I'll praise God. I'll sing to God. I'll be able to go here and there at any kind of realm at the awesome speed that I don't know what the awesome speed is and I'll glorify God as those angels glorify God at the empty tomb I'll be able to help Jesus as those angels that ministered to Jesus on the mountain train uh, on the mount where he was tempted by Satan I'll be able to minister to Jesus as those angels ministered to him in the garden as his disciples slept now worthy of God's honor and glory how's that for an angel as touching the dead that they rise. Look, look how Jesus keeps throwing it right in their face. That's like if a Catholic priest came up to me. It's not the bread and the wine. It's not the bread and the wine. Now watch this. Have ye not read? Ooh. Take that to a Catholic priest or any Catholic. Have you not read what the Bible says? Mr. Jehovah Witness, have you not read what the King James Bible says? In the book of Moses, uh, he, they said to him, Moses wrote unto us, so Jesus, okay, Moses wrote unto you, let's see what Moses has to say, okay? 
wouldn't you like to have been here for this? I would like to just pull up a seat and sit there with a smirk on my face. Like, <laughs> you imagine what the disciples? You imagine what the disciples are doing? What are they doing? I told you not to say sit in a seat next to him, James. Come on, that guy is in all the trouble and all that. Well, look at Peter over there. You know, I don't know. How in the bush? Jesus Christ has authorized and authenticated the bush talk. Some people say that that bush, you know, they have all kinds of explanations that don't match what God said. How in the bush God spoke unto him. Got a little problem here. We got a little problem. We do have a problem. We got to stop and read. And we're not going to go look. You can go look. I'll leave you to do it. It said that the angel of the Lord spoke to Moses. So what Jesus said out of his mouth and what Moses told us what happened at that who was there. According to the Bible, Mr. Jehovah Witness, that angel of the Lord is God. And that's Jesus. Jesus spoke to Moses. You know, he just told those those those. Christ rejecting, Bible non honoring, Sadducees that didn't believe nothing. When I spoke to Moses, now this is what I said I am the God, that's Jesus, the angel of the Lord, I am the God of Abraham, I am the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Jesus Christ proclaimed to be the Trinity of the foundation of the Jews because God said to Moses, and it was the angel of the Lord that spoke to Moses, and it was Jesus Christ, who is the Word, John chapter 1. So if I was Jesus for a moment and put a little humanness to these Sadducees, I would have said, I am the God of Abraham, I am the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, <laughs> to you. That, that was, that's what I would do. When you're going to quote Moses, we're back to normal again, back to, to the Bible. When you're going to quote Moses... Be realized, you're going to quote from me, Jesus. <laughs> now, Jesus is not God. That He just told these, these Sadducees, when you quote Moses, you're quoting me. And we've already had the Mount Transfiguration in Mark, haven't we? By the way, yeah, we did. By the way, guys, I just spoke to Moses a little while ago. He's doing okay. <laughs> they don't know about that. Only Peter, James, and John. I had a conversation with Moses. And guess what? I'm fulfilling all the things that Moses wrote. You want to talk about Elijah now? <laughs> he is not the God of the dead. How's that? You don't ever die. Even though you die, you don't die. Now, is that not a contradiction? The wages of sin is death, but if I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the gospel will be saved, absent from the body and present with the Lord. And yet the Bible says, when you take my body, if there's a body, I mean, you know, fall out or anything like that, if you take my body and bury it in a cemetery or cremate me, whatever it happens, the body sleepeth, it don't die. But yet I taste death if the rapture is not during my time. He's not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. He therefore do greatly err and ends the conversation calling him, you're, you're in error. You're wrong. Leaves the conversation, you're wrong. Bye. Are we done? And one of the scribes came. We're having a day, aren't we? Now you can just see that the they don't want people around. They don't want children coming to Jesus and all that. Now you can just see him getting aggravated. This is like a wrestling tag team. You know, they go up to the, they high five or something. How they do it? They, all right, now your turn. Get in the ring with them. I just got my butt beat. You guys go. One of the scribes came and having heard them reasoning together, and perceiving that he had answered them well. Yeah, you put him down. Asked him. What is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is. All right, now, he's going to address the crowd. Everyone. Hear, O Israel. Does it say church? Don't say church. 
The Lord our God is one Lord. That's out of the law. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God. And Roman gods hanging out there, you know. With all thy heart. I've come short on that one all the time. I failed. Ten Commandments. I keep the Ten Commandments. Really? Remember this passage. With all thy heart. you got to love the Lord. All your heart. No room for sports. No room for movies. No room, no room for family. No room for pets. You can't have a front license plate say, I'm the number one sports fan of whatever team. That's kind of a hard statement that Jesus said there. All thy heart. Not out. Ah. Not partial, not 99.99% .99 like that soap. All, I've failed. That's it. I'm done. I don't need to go no further. I'm a sinner. I'm going to hell. Outside of the blood of Jesus Christ. You ready? Heart. Remember what the heart was? The heart was wicked and all the wickedness that comes out of man. And with all thy soul, that eternal being that is you. That part of you that lives forever. You better have that soul stated and insurance and grounded and marked for God only and no one else. You die and your soul goes to hell, you're not loving God. Because you wouldn't be in hell. You don't love God when you make God put you in hell because you disobeyed God. Then you didn't make God do it, you did it yourself. But you made God do it by his word. And that gets confusing. But And with all thy mind, what you think? Everything you think. Kind of hard for a man in Daytona Beach to go walking down the street and think about God on his mind all the time. It's kind of hard to think about God when you're in a grocery store and your stomach is rumbling to be thinking about God all the time. kind of hard to be driving down the road and be thinking about God all the time I failed there my soul's going to heaven by the blood of Jesus Christ but when it comes to heart and mind I failed with all thy strength and that don't mean lifting weights or anything that means you never give in you never question you never doubt I failed now this is the first commandment there's no self in this commandment and we've all come short of this first commandment never mind the rest of the nine any of the nine that we broke we break verse 30 the first commandment. first commandment is God first all the time every time definitely can't get by that one don't tell me you keep the ten you can't you can't get by number one absolutely not and God knew it was impossible. That's why Jesus came and kept the first commandment with all of them. The second. You mean there's a second Lord after that? Namely this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Now the rest of the commandments. Thou shalt not covet. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt honor thy mother and father. Those are all relationship to your neighbor and people around you. So the Ten Commandments are divided into two categories. The first three really belong to God. The Sabbath honors God, the Creator. You don't make no likeness to Him. He's to be number and four. Thou shalt not take His name in vain. That's all your relationship to God. Everything else is your relationship to the neighbor or the person that's next to you. You're not supposed to want what he has. You're not supposed to kill him. You're not supposed to take anything that's his. There is none other commandment greater than these. And those are all the ten. In two. And even that rich, rich young ruler blew it by the coveting. Had he really loved God with all his heart, soul, mind, and strength, he wouldn't want that money. That's where he blew it. And the scribe said unto him, Well, Master, thou hast said the truth, for there is one God. Well, 
kind of what he said, but not what he said. And there is none other but he. And to love him with all the heart, with all the understanding. Now, that understanding matches the mind. Understanding and mind go together. With all thy soul and all thy strength. So see, the Bible with the Bible, you can find definitions. Because they said everything he said in verse 30, except for mind was changed for understanding. The Bible is its own dictionary many times. And sometimes you got to look up words. It's okay. It's allowed. 1828 dictionary, the best one. Even quote scripture. Let's put that one in the school. Oh, can't. I have the word God. Sorry. We're going to have perverted, by, uh, per perverted dictionaries with dot com. Yeah, they can put yogurt. Their religion is old milk and creamy. My my religion is pure word. Okay, where was I? Uh, and to love him, to love his neighbor as himself is more than all hope, burnt offerings and sacrifice. Now that's a kick in the butt. Because that's what these guys lived on the offerings. You say, you know, if we did everything you just said to do. People wouldn't be bringing us the offerings. And then we would starve to death. Not to go to work. We can't bring the offerings unless we have a right mind, right soul, right heart, right strength. And we can't do that to what you said to God. He really put these scribes in place with, with his answer. And when Jesus saw that he answered discreetly, he said unto him, Thou art not far from the kingdom of God. Can I add something here that you maybe can throw in the garbage can? Now, I don't, the scribes were the ones that were in the words and stuff like that. We've already dealt with the Pharisees. Many believe that Paul was that rich young know, ruler, but could be. Now, if this. What way Jesus answered the scribe, he probably got saved later on. Because he didn't say anything like this to any of the religious leaders ever. I'm wondering if this guy's close to Paul or something. I don't know. Thou art not far from the kingdom of God. I mean, you're going to heaven. You're going to a Jewish heaven. The kingdom. David. Solomon. Rehoboam. Don't ask me name anymore. Thou art not far from the kingdom of God. No man after th that durst ask any, ask him any questions. I wouldn't ask him any more questions. By the way, they ran out of people to ask him questions. He put down the Pharisees. He put down the Herodians. He put down the Sadducees. He put down the scribes. With the people and the multitude and the disciples watching him do it. Using what? The Bible. Using a movie? No. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I don't you don't want me to say anything else with current events that he did not use. But he didn't use promotions and gimmicks and other kind of junk. He used the word of God. And he left them in their place. Sinners. He left them as sinners. Now it's up to them to get right with God, and many do not. Some do. Some will get right, but many do not. When you're carrying a conversation with somebody, you don't leave them with good times and candy and all that. You leave them as a sinner, alone with God. You will not leave somebody you're dealing with about the gospel in good happiness feeling. You think they're going to turn to God in salvation? You leave them as a sinner and it's like, Oh, I need to get right. They're going to think about getting right. They're going to think God's going to work on them. the Holy Spirit. This guy, he left. Yeah, you are not far from the kingdom of God, but you're not there yet. Left a question. And Jesus answered and said, oh, now Jesus is going to do it. Now Jesus is going to throw a question in. Do you, I said, the enemies are the Pharisees, the Herodians, the Sadducees, and the scribes. You know who the enemy of Jesus is? The Pharisees, the, Her the Herodians, the Sadducees. You know who the enemy of the Pharisees, the Herodians, and the Sadducees and the scribes were? Jesus. He just shot them down four times. Now he's going to go for five. 
He's going to call them all out on the mat right now. And Jesus answered and said, while he taught in the temple, now he's in the temple. How say the scribes that Christ is the son of David? He was just talking to the scribes. And he is the son of David. Read Mary and Joseph's line. How is the anointed one the son of David? For David himself said by the Holy Ghost, Uh-oh, David spoke by inspiration. Uh-oh, men wrote the Bible. Yes, but it was... Look, David was the pen. The Holy Ghost was the ink. Jesus told you that the Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand till I make thy enemies thy footstool. Jesus said, that when this was written down by David, David wrote of the Holy Spirit when he wrote this passage down. Holy Spirit inspired Psalms 110 verse 1 was David being used by the Holy Ghost. David therefore himself calls him Lord. He calls God Lord. A reverential God Lord. And whence he is then his son. How can Christ be his son if he's honoring God as God? And the common people, see there's other people. <laughs> there are other people there heard him gladly. See, the Pharisees, the, the Herodians, the Sadducees, and the scribes are lifting themselves up. Look who we are. And listen, I'm the son of David. I'm the king. You don't see me wearing robes. You don't see me putting on the thing. Only thing I've done with my kingly thing is come in on a, on a donkey. You wait till the next time I see you guys. <laughs> You're not going to like it. And he said unto them, in his doctrine, in his teaching, beware of scribes. Who's the them? The common people. Beware of the scribes. That's who he just answered, the last people, which love to go in long clothing. Attention getting. You know anybody likes to go in long clothing? Clothing that make themselves stand out. And love salutations in their marketplace. Hi, Father. Hi, Sister. How would you know they're a father? How would you know they're a sister? They're long clothing. And they back his hospital all the time to go in. And I run into this one priest all the time in the elevator going up. I said, hey, you got your shirt on backwards, buddy. And well, one time I said that when someone's in there, that's disrespectful. What? I'm just trying to tell the guy he got his shirt on backwards. I'm trying to help him. I wouldn't want him to stand out or anything. Love salutations in the marketplaces. And the chief seats in the synagogues. Ooh. So the synagogues had special seating. Reserved seating. And uppermost rooms at feasts. That would be the best places in the feasts. Which devour widows' houses. You know, give us money, we can put your husband out of, out of hell or purgatory. And for a pretense, make long prayers. These shall receive greater damnation. So you could be greater damned, you could have a greater punishment in hell than others, what Jesus just said. I wouldn't want to be one of these people. I would not want to be a Catholic priest because you know what? Burning in hell is bad enough, but burning in a different degree of hell than your, your parishioners, that's even worse. How about being a pope over that whole group of people? You're going to burn even worse. I can't fathom that. How can you fathom degrees in hell? It's all fire. You're all swimming in it in the lake of fire. But it's going to be worse for others. Than some. Jesus sat over against the treasury 
and behold, beheld how the people cast money into the treasury. Ding, ding, ding. And many that were rich, oh, here we go, rich again, cast in much. And there came a certain poor widow, and she threw in two mites. Run that back to Luke 21, verses 1 through 4, which makes a farthing. I have no idea about Jewish money. But she threw in two coins, and the two coins make one coin. And Jesus knew how much she gave. How's that now? Jesus keeps records of our giving. How's that for accounted? You don't believe me? Have you ever read Numbers? Have you ever tried to read Numbers 7? Completely. Without thinking about you got to mow the lawn after you're done. Have you ever read Chronicles? God is a great bookkeeper. And then something that happened 33 AD, we're reading on August 4th, 2016. Still, how much this woman gave. All eternity, this woman who has no name has been recorded what she's given. And God did not record anything what the rich people were given. How's that? God can just say, you know what? You just cash in your abundance in your offering. That's it. Oh, that woman there? She gave two mites. Mark that down. That's a farthing in the books. You can give to God and not have God even acknowledge it. Oh, he gave. That's it. Just write down gave. How much, Lord? He gave. That's it. And this comes in the same chapter. Lord, shall we give unto Caesar or not? Oh, don't say stuff like that. Arr! He closes this chapter off with a woman who gave all she had. Lord, do we give to Caesar? Net. Nah. Hey, listen, I fall guilty in this one too of giving. And he called on to him his disciples. Come here, boys. They're back in the picture. They've been gone this whole chapter. I don't mean gone. They, you know, they're out of it. They're just standing by. He calls his, his disciples and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that this poor widow, he knew she was poor. Did you get that? And he also knew she was a widow. You know how he you know how you know Jesus is God? Go to Walmart. Close your eyes, spin around 20 times, walk down the aisle, grab the first person you say, and then tell me about that person that you just ran into. Tell me about their, their marriage condition and tell me about their money condition. How well are you going to do? He's got this woman nailed down. Why? Because he's God, Mr. Jehovah Witness. And this woman, whoever she is, is known by Jesus. Are you known by Jesus? Does Jesus know your marriage state? And does Jesus know how much you're giving back to him? This poor widow has cast more in than all that which have cast into the treasury. Now, you know the disciples are now scratching their head. Wait a minute. Gave her, saw two coins go in there, Lord. And I see bills over there. For they did cast in their abundance. Oh, this is extra. This is after I paid the gas, after I paid for the college, after I paid my loan, after I paid for bowling night. Oh, I got $5 left. Okay, there it goes. But she of her want, she had needs. That money would have been used for something else that she had a need. Food, something that she wanted. We don't even, we're not even told what that want is. We're not sure if it's food. Maybe she wanted a jacket. I don't know. But she wanted something. She had the money and did cast it in all that she had. More about her want. Even all her living, that want was for her to survive and live. Where do you see this in the Old Testament? That widow was grabbing two sticks for her son and her to go eat and die. And a prophet came to her and God told her, you take care of him, I'll take care of you. And they lasted. Question calls for this whole, never mind the Pharisee, never mind the Sadducee, never mind the Herodian, never mind the, the, the scribe. 
are you known by your state and by your giving and by who you are amongst a crowd of people in the temple he's in the temple there's many people are you known by Jesus Christ and the world may not know your name Jesus knows her, his her name and you know that are you known by Jesus Christ and what's he tell his disciples what's he tell the people in heaven what's he tell God about you something to think about 